So this is how you do a stripe design on a wedding cake. Uh, I'm going to use gum paste again because it's got the elasticity that I want and because the stripes that you make tend to be really, really long. And if you do that in fondant, when you pick it up, the gravity of the fondant was, is going to pull it down and tear it apart. So gum paste is definitely the way to go. I've kneaded it so that it's nice and pliable, feels like a very smooth Play-Doh. The fat that I'm using is just vegetable shortening. It's kind of counterintuitive with gum paste. Uh, if it starts to feel sticky, you don't want to add powdered sugar. You never ever add powdered sugar or cornstarch to your gum paste. It's going to dry it out and cause it to crack on you. What you want to add is actually vegetable shortening. That's the kind of fat that you can use. It's going to make it really soft and pliable and keep it from sticking to things. So just like before, I'm going to roll this out so that it's thin enough to feed through my pasta machine. You'll notice that when I move the long piece of gum paste, I do it on the back of my fingers. That keeps it from stretching out too much. There we go, so it's nice and long. I'll use again the back of my ruler so that it doesn't leave any strange imprints from the cork side. And the first stripe that I'm going to do is actually going to be the width of the ruler. Uh, when I go up, I'm going to do one that's about half that size. But I want to cut them at the same time so that I don't have to uh, re-roll it out. So all the way along the top. Oops. There we go. So not only is that one stripe, it's also the top of our next stripe that we're gonna do. So, again, using my paintbrush, I wanna start off on the bottom stripe, because that's what we're gonna measure from to build up. This is just water. Thin coating, I don't wanna have any droplets or pools of water. They will actually start to disintegrate the fondant and you end up with a very pitted appearance. All right, so that is all the way around. If you have a back to your cake, a part of the cake that you're not really happy with, that's where you want to start your seam for the stripe. Okay, so I'm just being very careful that it butts up along the bottom here. It should fit right into the corner. And, whoops, this is where it meets. So with my X-Acto blade, I'm just gonna follow the cut underneath. And we can just squish it together a little bit so that it meets nicely. Now, before we move on, we wanna make sure that it's as level as possible. There's a couple areas where it looks like it came up some. So just kind of nudge it down a little bit. Well, that looks great. So that is our first stripe. We could leave that alone or we could go back and add another stripe, which is what we're going to do right now. So what I'm going to do is wrap this around my cake nice and tight. So I'm going to make sure it's nicely butted up to the stripe below. And then with my X-Acto blade, I'm going to go in and make some little tick marks. And I can use that as a cheat sheet later for where to put my next stripe. You can do this with varying widths of ribbon. Right after Christmas, I always stock up on tons of interesting ribbons so that I have scraps I can use. There we go. Alrighty. Okay. 
Okay. So with my paintbrush, I'm gonna add a thin stream of water right above the tick marks that we made a moment ago with the tape measure. And again, avoid drips, just a little bit of water, just enough so that it sticks. And we want our seams to be on the same side. It's easiest to do this at eye level. And let the turntable help you. So I'm gonna hold this spot where it goes and simply turn Now we go back and straighten it out using our little spatula here. Ideally, you shouldn't have too much, too many adjustments to make. And there you go. That's how you do a stripe pattern on your wedding cake.